Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam Ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Habata fillah Continue on in our study of Bulugha Maram Kitab al-Jama' The comprehensive book The chapter Bir Wasila The chapter of uh, Kindness and relations. We reach the hadith of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, which is also a hadith which references the meaning of bir and in a general sense, meaning kindness or goodness in a most in in accordance uh, with the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam and that's why it is uh, it has relevance in this uh, chapter and why Imam Ibn Hajr al-Askarani rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatan wasi'a why he uh, put this hadith in this uh, in the chapter of Bir and the hadith is hadith 1260 narrated Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said every act of goodness is sadaqah and al-Bukhari uh, reported this hadith so this hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the hadith of uh, Jabir radiallahu ta'ala an it shows us that from the manners and the general morality of the Muslim is recognizing that every act of goodness is a type of charity so that shows us that good uh, that charity is not restricted to simp uh, uh, of just giving wealth. Charity is not restricted to giving wealth, but rather charity can be uh, a very general way of spreading goodness and every act of goodness and kindness is charity. And this is in accordance with the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Kullu ma'rufin sadaqah Kullu ma'rufin sadaqah Every goodness Everything which the people regard as good In accordance with the shar' Is sadaqah So that lets us know that simp by simply smiling In someone's face By simply giving the salams And all the other uh, Ways That were mentioned In this group of ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which fall under goodness and righteousness and piety all also form a type of charity and so this hadith is from those kalimat ajami those comprehensive uh, ahadith or those hadith or those statements of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that were very comprehensive in meaning that they were limited in words but the meaning was azim the meaning is, is immense and the meaning is powerful and the meaning is uh, a comprehensive meaning and so this hadith as we mentioned it shows us that there are a variety of ways to give sadaqah and that it is not restricted to simply wealth and in the next hadith uh, narrated Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said do not consider any act of goodness insignificant even if it is meeting your brother with a cheerful face and this hadith uh, the hadith of Abu Dhar is uh, a hadith of uh 
a hadith in uh, Akhrajuhu Muslim. So this is a hadith in Sahih Muslim. And this hadith even goes from the general to the specific. Meaning the first hadith we mentioned, the hadith of uh, Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anh, that that was comprehensive in its meaning. Showing that kullu, uh, every goodness is charity. This hadith gives us a specific example that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa gives which refers to ways in which we can give that charity. Ways in which we can uh, be and illustrate that goodness. And so in the hadith, the hadith of Abi Dhar, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تهكرن من المعروف شيء ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه بوجه طلق. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, "Do not belittle any act of kindness or any act of goodness, even if it was meeting your brother with a smiling face. That shows." That simply smiling is also a type of charity and goodness. And what we learn from this hadith is that a person should not, or the mu'min and the believer should not belittle any act of goodness or any act of kindness and thinking that it's a small kindness. And that in fact... They don't know the immense reward that they may uh, receive from their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala for doing uh, something which is something simple and small. And from the examples is this example of simply smiling at your brother, which is something very easy for all of us to do. So it shows that this is from the prophetic mannerisms and this is something in which we should be practicing because it's something simple that all of us can do and receive reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it also shows us that, uh, you know, that we are unaware of the benefits of many of the acts that we do and that the Muslim should always be conscious and always be striving to do even the most simplest acts of kindness and this is why it shows how important mannerisms and man, uh, manners are and that uh, doing ma'ruf, doing good deeds uh, can can be uh, good deeds can be done in a variety of ways and so the Muslim should be always striving to find ways in which to incur uh, the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the blessings and reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with and he subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, hates. In the next hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, narrated uh, Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when you make some soup, increase its water and keep your neighbors in mind. And this was also reported by Muslim. This hadith also has immense benefits and it also is showing the prophetic manners, the manners of the mu'mineen in which they should be concerned about how to spread goodness. And that small kindnesses are an act of charity. So this jumlata hadith, these group of ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are all showing that ma'roof can be uh, done in a variety of ways. And they, 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 are, they, they are all a part of good manners and they are all ways of giving sadaqah, which is not the uh, necessarily tied to a financial gain or a financial blessings. And so this hadith more specifically shows us that the believer can do a small goodness by simply uh, increasing something they were already doing for themselves in order to spread the goodness. And in this case, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that adding more water to your soup in order that you could feed others, especially your neighbor, 
and what have you, that this is an act of goodness. And we're going to talk about some of the details and some of the great immense benefits uh, that are uh, that Ibn Uthaymeen, rahmatullahi alayhi, that he derived uh, from this hadith. So, from the fawa'id of this hadith, is first, is that a person should be vigilant in looking to the condition of their neighbor and caring for their neighbors. And that this, and, and also that a person should be concerned about uh, spreading goodness and righteousness to one's neighbors. And we already talked about how important it is, the haq of the jiran, the haq of the neighbor, the right of the neighbors, that that is something incredibly important. important. And this is in accordance with the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu when he said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yakram jarahu or yukram uh, jarahu. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whoever believes in Allah and the last day. So here Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, uh, here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned two of the pillars of Iman. And is showing us that these are the deeds of the mu'min. So that if one is uh, falls under this category, meaning they're from Ahli Iman, وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنْ مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment, then they should be good with their neighbors. You know, that they should be generous to their neighbors. And so this shows us the importance of being good and generous uh, and having generosity with one's neighbors. And that, that it's actually a right and something that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded with, as we mentioned prior to this, and we gave some of the evidence from a hadith. Uh, another benefit obtained from this hadith is that sometimes by mixing something which increases its value for uh, and, and there's benefit in that, then there's no problem with that. So that's one of the benefits derived from this hadith, meaning that if you mix something, in this case, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, advised mixing water with one soup, so that one has already has soup. Maybe it has meat, maybe it has uh, vegetables, whatever the case may be. And of course, water, which we have for soup. And by adding water, even if it dilutes the soup, the content of the vegetables a bit, or the the maybe perhaps some of the flavoring of the meat, but there's a benefit in that, in that other people will be able to eat from that. That increase and and that also increases the value of that food, because now you're feeding other people. Other people uh, are not going to be uh, uh, others will benefit from that 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 food. So here you see that there's maslaha, there's great benefit in doing so, and that this increases the value or the amount of that soup by mixing water. Even though the water may have some, it may dilute, uh, it does dilute, have, uh, you know, it dilutes the, the, the fullness of, the, of maybe the taste and a bit of the vegetables or what have you, but there's still a greater benefit by doing so, you feed more people. And you're able to feed your, your neighbors. And so this shows that there are times when even though if you do something which weakens something else, if there is a benefit and if it increases the value, then this is uh, permissible to do. An opposite example would be if someone... For example, this does not include ghash or uh, cheating. Because as the Prophet ﷺ said, Man minna. Whoever cheats, uh, they are not from us. So for example, if a person were selling uh, items and they added water to give their items more uh, to seem as if they were fuller, or something, or for example, a person is selling uh, chickens, and they feel, and this is one of the practices I've heard that they do, it, aside from antibiotics and other things that many people add to uh, 
the animals, which then in turn causes harm to us because we, uh, we eat those animals in turn, that they do all kind of things to the animal to make them, to make them uh, produce more meat or be heavier or whatever the case may be. So if someone were to fill the stomachs of the chicken, and I've heard that they even flood them, some of them, forcing them maybe with a water hose or something just so that they weigh more. You know, this is causing the chicken to be unhealthy. You know, this is uh, a, 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 a horrible practice. And so this person is doing this in order to gain profit. And even if they were doing it because they want to increase meat, there's still harm in that. So this does not include these kind of practices because this is not increasing for the maslaha, the benefit of people. Rather, it is doing this to cheat the people to say, I have a chicken now that weighs, uh, you know, whatever, three kilos, not just uh, two and a half or two kilos. It's put on an extra kilo because of water weight, because I forced water into it or force fed it or something like this. So this does not include things like this, but rather the example, the best example that we can look to is the example that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned with the soup. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is this hadith illustrates the importance of people uh, paying attention to the needs of their neighbors and looking to benefit their neighbors and not be a source of harm. And this is from prophetic guidance, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is this hadith shows us also that uh, the importance of a person being uh, that the Muslim should always strive to be uh, a person who is determined to do uh, uh, what they are trying to achieve, you know, to, to, to be someone who is trying to achieve things, and that they should be a person of, of wisdom, You're not a person of ignorance and, and immorality. And this is illustrated because the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, uh, said, uh, that when you make some soup, increase its water and keep your neighbors in mind. So here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that uh, by keeping your neighbors in mind that this is a, this is being conscious. That means you're, this is from cleverness or this is from a person who is a thinking person, a person who is a reflected person because they're reflecting on their status and they're reflecting on that of their neighbors. And they are determined to do good because this takes uh, intention. It takes intention when you're doing good deeds because that means uh, doing good deeds like this, for example, that you increase the water, that means you are taking out of your time and uh, you know, taking time out, you were actually thinking of your neighbor's uh, uh, benefit and thinking goodness about your neighbor and thinking about sharing with your neighbor. So this requires reflection and this requires um, being uh, an outrovert, if you will, or someone who is who is giving from the outside, who's not just thinking of themselves, but they're thinking of others. So this takes a type of determination and nia intention, as the Prophet ﷺ said, in the Verily, actions are tied to the intention. So here a person has good intentions, so they are doing and doing, fulfilling a good deed by servicing and doing good for their uh, neighbor. Another benefit of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ is it shows us the immense uh, importance and the immense right that the neighbors have over us. And Wallah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all of our many shortcomings because many of us don't even know who our neighbors are. And many of us don't have even good relations with our neighbors. In fact, some people go out of their way to harm their neighbors. And this is no doubt a sinful practice in accordance with what we've learned from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. In the next hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
uh, the hadith of Abi Huraira, narrated Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu, Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, if anyone removes one of the anxieties of this world from a believer, Allah will remove one of his anxieties on the day of resurrection from him. If anyone relieves the burden of one who is destitute, Allah will relieve his burden in this world and in the next. And if anyone conceals the faults of a Muslim, Allah will conceal his faults in this world and in the next. Allah helps his servant as long as the servant helps his brother, Ru'ahu Muslim. This is a hadith in Sahih Muslim, and it shows us the importance of helping one another as believers. That the mu'min, a mu'min akhu Muslim, yushidduhu ba'dhu ba'dha. As the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, that the believer is a brother to uh, the other believers, and they strengthen one another. And so, if we follow this prophetic advice, the nation of Islam would be in a much better state. The ummah would be in a much better state if we were really concerned with our brothers and the struggles and tri tri tribulations that they are facing in, in Philistine and Palestine with uh, the things that are going on there and with our brothers who are suffering from poverty and warfare in various parts of the continent of Africa, with our brothers and sisters in the poor villages of Pakistan and Afghanistan and in India and all over the world in Burma, all our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted there, we would have a greater concern. If we had a greater concern and we were really striving for the betterment of the Ummah and we were really thinking as one nation and removing the harms and the difficulties that one another uh, experiences, our Ummah would be in a much better uh, state and state of affairs. And this only comes by coming back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and these group of manners that we're talking about are the Muslim, are, are Muslim manners, but these are manners which strengthen the Islamic Brotherhood. And as we mentioned in the first hadith, in the, in the uh, comprehensive book when we mentioned about these, uh, the importance of the rights of one another and that these uh, uh, ahadith, that they uh, enforce those Islamic mannerisms and enforce the Muslim Brotherhood. And one of the first ahadith that we studied was about the importance of giving salams and how the Prophet Wasallam said that, shall I not tell you of something that if you do it, it will cause you to love one another. And then he said, spreading the salams. So by spreading the salams, this increases the love and the akhuwa to imaniya, the Islamic brotherhood. From this hadith are immense uh, benefits that can be obtained. And first, before we get into some of those benefits, it's important to look at... Uh, as Ben Uthaymin mentions here, that there is a, a general qaida or a general rule or principle that is, uh, can be derived from this hadith, which is uh, Mansus. He said, from the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he said, Wallahu fi awn al abd ma kan al abdu fi awni akhi. That Allah is assisting a servant, meaning a servant who worships him and him alone, Ahl Tawheed, Ahl Iman, as long as the servant is assisting his brother. And so this is a general principle. This is a general principle. And let's look at how Ben Uthaymin dissects this principle, this qaida, and increases our understanding of this. He said, Rahmatullah alayhi wa rahmatul wasiyah, he said, that some of the people that when they uh, mention uh, similar to this hadith, they mention, rather they change the uh, statement to uh, as long as a servant is assisting his brother. And Ben Othimin says this is a mistake. He said the real meaning 
is, as uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, مَا كَانَ abd. And this is the al-fadh of the hadith. So this is the actual statement that was mentioned in the hadith, if anyone removes the anxiety. So if anyone uh, helps, uh, you know, helps his, his brother, uh, that this has to be context, uh, contextualized. He said that this shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist a person in accordance with his assistance uh, to his brother. So it uh, so as long as a person is assisting his brother, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist him. And this is uh, very important to understand this, uh, to understand the uh, difference and this qaida. Some of the benefits of this hadith is first, this hadith uh, encourages us to remove the harms uh, that our fellow fellow uh, believers face. So it, it, it encourages us to help one another. Another benefit of this hadith is uh, that al jaza min jins al amal that the reward of assisting or doing this uh, act of goodness is proportionate and is in direct relation to the actual deed. So here, uh, the Prophet ﷺ is mentioning that if a believer helps another believer to in, in something, of course, that which is righteousness and halal and good, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help him in good. So that means that by your assistance, you gain Allah's assistance. Meaning by you assisting your brother, Allah will assist you. So al jaza min jins al amal, meaning that the reward is a is in direct accordance with the action, or it's it's actually a part of the same action, uh, the same um, uh, the same reward. The reward and the actual action that you did to earn the reward are similar, if you will. So the example we gave is that, or the Prophet Sallallahu as he mentioned in the hadith, assisting your brother, you gain Allah's assistance. So here, what is the, the reward? The reward is the assistance from Allah. And what is the deed that you did? It was assisting your brother. So both have to do with assistance. So part of the, uh, the good deed that you did, your reward uh, is also in accordance with that, that good deed. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows the uh, uh, the importance of making things easy upon others, uh, especially when people are having difficulty with something. So for example, if someone has a debt and you assist them and help them to remove you know, help them to pay off their debt, or they owe you the money and you forgive them of their debt, or what have you, that all of this, this is uh, in accordance with this hadith, removing a difficulty from your brother who is having difficulty uh, paying you, or paying a debt. And this also is very important that we have an understanding of this, and that this, uh, that there are a couple of different ways uh, in which to assist your brother. And one, of course, is in righteousness, and the other is in sinfulness. And of course, uh, we are ordered and commanded to do what? Of course command the good and forbid the evil. So we're not allowed to assist your brother in lying, in cheating, in stealing, and in harming others or taking the haq and the rights of others, but rather you assist your brother in, uh, in ma'roof.
in goodness. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us the importance of covering the faults of your brother. And that by covering the fault of a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover your faults in the, in, the, in the hereafter. This is very important for us because all of us have sins. As the Prophet sallallahu said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khayra khattayina tawabun. All the children of Adam, they make mistakes, they commit sins. And the best of those who sin are those who repent. So since we all sin, we are all in need of the forgiveness and we're all in need of covering our sins because sometimes we do sins that are open and sometimes we do sins which are hidden. And those hidden sins we don't want anyone to find out about as we studied in uh, prior hadith. And that we want so that we should not go around exposing the sins of others. But if others are doing sin outwardly, then this is a different hukum. This is different than that. So as long as there is no maslaha, no great benefit uh, in openly mentioning someone's sin, for example, someone who calls to a law and they are open with their sin, well, the people need to be warned about this individual, that yes, this person is a caller to bid'ah, this person is a caller to sinfulness, he's saying this, but we see him regularly with his girlfriend or whatever the case may be, so it may be a cause that there's more benefit in not covering his fault because he didn't even cover his fault than otherwise. But if you find out someone's mistake and uh, there is absolutely no benefit, it only causes harmfulness, then it's better to just advise the person and cover his fault and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover your fault bi'idnillah ta'ala. Likewise, there are other situations. For example, if a person... Uh, for example, people are from uh, two different countries or something, and they're going to get married. And, for example, a sister wants to know about a brother in, a, in such and such country. And she doesn't know anything about him, really. Uh, and she, she wants to marry him. They are already, uh, you know... So, for her to inquire, or her wali, to find out more information about an individual... And someone to hide and say, no, this brother's been known for adultery. He's been known to smoke weed. I'm not going to tell her. He's a little bit, uh, you know, he has some mental issues or he has something. I'm, I'm going to cover his fault. No, that's not what is meant here. And that is not in accordance because we have other nusuls, other texts, which show us that that is not the case. That is not what is meant here. Uh, so in that situation, the woman has the right to know you know, about the brother's past, something that's going to cause her harm and so forth. And you should not cover their fault in that uh, situation. So that is very important to know and understand how to contextualize uh, this text. And that this text is, uh, as Ben Othaymin mentioned, Laysa ala itlaqihi. This is not uh, in, uh, in totality or uh, this... Uh, is not just the general, uh, it, it's not absolute, but rather it is restricted or explained by other texts. Other texts highlight that there are exceptions, so it is not absolute, and that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, does not like that we spread evil and that we um, if we know about evil and it's outwardly or whatever situation, then it may be necessary to speak uh, to speak about that individual in order to warn people from their harm. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith uh, also affirms for us the uh, day of judgment because the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, that whoever believes in the uh, day, uh, or uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will remove one of the anxieties of the day of resurrection from him. So that affirms for us that statement is very clear that what? There is a Yom al Qiyamah. So that the Mu'min can rest their Aqidah on, uh, and this is another Nas to show that there is a what? There is a day of judgment. So this hadith affirms, if that. Al-Yawm al-Akhir. 
and also that there is jizah, that there is a reward on that day. Uh, a last benefit of this hadith that we want to highlight is that the general qaida or the general principle that Ben Uthameen mentions and he says and he uses the actual text itself and he says Allahu fi awn al-abd ma kana al-abdu fi awn akhihi that Allah supports a servant as long as he supports his brother and Ben Uthameen mentions that this is a qaida that this is an actual principle which is derived from this text and he says, and what is meant by that, as, as we kind of highlighted prior to this, is that uh, that which, uh, you know, assisting your brother in ma'ruf, in goodness, and that you don't assist him in that which is harmful. So if a brother wants you to assist him in taking his life, or taking someone else's life, or causing harm to people, or stealing and cheating and lying from people, of course you don't assist him in that evil. A brother wants you to dig up dirt on someone else. You don't assist him in evil, but you assist him in ma'ruf. So that's very uh, important. And we know that's restricted, that assistance is restricted by another text, by uh, an ayat in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Wallahu la yuhibbul fasad. That Allah does not love evil. He does not love wickedness, that you spread wickedness and that wickedness. He doesn't love that. Allah hates that. Allah loves ma'roof. And he loves that we command the good and forbid the evil. So Allah doesn't love that you are a part of evil or that you spread evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَتَعَوَنَ عَلَى بِرِ وَتَقْوَ وَلَا تَعَوَنَ عَلَى إِثْمِ وَإِدْوَانِ That it, uh, cooperate together in bir. And this goes back to our chapter, uh, chapter bir. Uh, wasila, you know, the, the chapter of, of, of goodness or kindness and relations. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, ala biri wa taqwa. And cooperate in piety or goodness and God fearfulness, taqwa. Wala ta'awun ala ithmi wa udwan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a command in the first part of uh, the prophet, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands in the first part of his this ayat, he gives a commandment. And when we have a command, the asal of it is that it shows that it's an obligation, meaning it's an obligation to uh, cooperate in goodness and God-fearfulness. And then there's a nahi, and then there's a prohibition. When nahi fi the tahrim, and when there's a prohibition, it shows that something is impermissible in its origin. So here in the second part of the ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits us from cooperating together ala ithmi, ala sinfulness, with udwan. So it shows Allah doesn't like fasad and he doesn't like that you cooperate in evil and in spreading evil and hatred. SubhanAllah. Look at those nusus, how powerful they are and how they complement one another. So it shows us that that qa'id am that general principle is restricted. Allah fi awn al abd ma kan al abdu fi awn akhi. That Allah is with his uh, is with a, a a a servant, meaning someone who worships him and him alone, as long as he assists his brother, and that means assists his brother in goodness, not fasad, as we mentioned. In the next hadith, hadith one thousand. Uh, 264 narrated Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'an Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he who guides to something good will have a reward similar to that of the one who acts upon it uh, Muslim or akhrajahu Muslim this hadith in Sahih Muslim the hadith of uh, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'an where the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he who guides to something good will have a reward similar to that of the one who acts upon it. So this hadith, in general, this is a hadith which shows us the importance, again, which goes back to the tap, chapter uh, title, uh, of, of, uh, of bir, of righteousness or goodness, even in the most general uh, form. And as we have been studying in this last 
uh, in this lesson about the various forms of good and that it's general there it's a comprehensive term or ma'ruf it also can be is a very comprehensive term when we say amr bi ma'ruf and nahi munkar commanding the good and forbidding the evil that this ma'ruf commanding the good is a very general term and it is a or it's a very general comprehensive term and that there are various ways of course to fulfill that obligation of commanding the good and that the good is uh, comes with being that which is in accordance with the shara and so this hadith here shows us the jaza or the reward and the importance of guiding others to good and there are various ways to guide people to good and some of the benefits or uh, benefits that Ibn Uthameen, Imam Ibn Uthameen, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatul wasiya faqih, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him and bless him with Jannatul Fardos for the treasures that he left behind and that are still being produced from his recordings that they're produ pu putting in book form. Because in fact, this is an example of this hadith of leaving behind good and giving guidance to others, showing people good. Because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ دَلَّ عَلَى خَيْرٍ فَلَهُ مِثْلَ أَجْرٍ فَاعِلِهِ Whoever shows a person uh, goodness or you know the path of goodness or the way to goodness, then their reward is similar to them. Or, you know, their reward is the same as theirs. So, here we have that this great Imam, Ben Uthameen, rahmatullah left behind a treasure of knowledge in which to share, that he shared with his students of the time, and that we still benefit after his death. And this falls also under another hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa which is the hadith, uh, where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said a uh, hadith uh, ruahu muslim qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha matal idha matal mar'i and qata al-amalu illa min thalath that when a person dies his deeds cease except three as-sadaqa jariyah as-sadaqa jariyah the Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith is that when a person dies, their deeds cease except three. And the first he meant, mentioned was the Sadaqah Jariya. So this is one of the ways you can be a part of leaving, you know, leaving good for others and they benefit you as well they benefit this deed has benefited others by doing a continuous charity and it benefits you and it doesn't take away from your reward at all by doing this good deed and the second way as is mentioned in the hadith is knowledge which is uh, that the people benefit from. And so here in the example, and the reason I mentioned this in the context of this hadith, where the Prophet ﷺ said, Men dalla khair falahu mithla ajr fa'ilihi. That whoever uh, shows a, a person goodness, then he receives the reward similar to the one who acts upon it. So, al ilm yuntafa'abi, the knowledge in which people benefit from, which in this case, you know what they mean by even explaining this hadith, he is receiving reward even though his other deeds have cut off. They've stopped. But he is receiving reward because he has he left knowledge behind that others benefit. Me having not, never have met that great imam, we're reading this hadith and his explanation and he is receiving reward and we are receiving reward for teaching it 
and practicing it. And you're receiving reward if you practice it and if you share it with others. So you see how it's a continuous act of khayr. And everyone can get reward for it and the reward is the same. It doesn't take away from the ajr of the one who showed the khayr aslan at all. It doesn't take away from the reward that other people, the reward is being multiplied. So it shows the na'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the na'mah of the ilm and spreading ilm and showing people khayr. And what better khayr than to show people knowledge of their deen. Uh, from the benefit benefits of this hadith, first, is that there are uh, one of the benefits is important for us to look at the various ways that uh, a person can spread the khair that they uh, adalala ala khair so Ben mean he mentions that there's two ways or there's yeah it's of two types better yet to say two types of dalala ala khair of showing people the good the first type the first way is to show him uh, to show through example of khayr of showing the person uh, uh, directly showing and teaching that person knowledge for example for example by saying uh, it is sunnah for example to, to relate to someone it's sunnah for you to pray two rakats uh, for Salat al duha So now, the person who has told you this, they have showed you khair directly. Okay, they've given a direct illustration of khair. The second way of giving Dalala ila khair is Dalala khair mubashir. And this is a indirect way of giving the khair. And this encompasses, for example, if someone asks a question and you're, maybe you're teaching someone, they ask you a question. doesn't matter whatever the case may be. Someone asks you a question maybe about the religion. They say, is it halal to do such and such? And you don't know the answer. But yet you say, I'm going to ask one of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah who will give us the fatwa and then I will share it with you. So then you go and ask the Shaykh and he gives you an answer and you share it with the person. Then this is a Dilala Ghayr Mubashir. This is a way in which you have shared guidance and knowledge indirectly. Meaning, because you didn't know the answer and just give him a fatwa, but rather you went to Ahlul Dhikr. You went to those people who know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسَلْ أَحْلِ ذِكْرٍ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. So because you didn't know, you went to Ahl Khair, and Ahl Khair gave you a fatwa, and you shared it with the person. Or, you pointed them to Ahl Khair. So this is Dilala Ghayr Mubashir. Meaning, you didn't directly show them and directly tell them, but you helped them to, to get the guidance and assistance that they required. So I think that's clear. So there's, uh, Ben Othaymin is mentioned in the two, those two ways, that there's a way of directly guiding someone and showing them the good and receiving reward for it, or there's an indirect way of guiding people and showing them the good and receiving reward for it. Meaning you get reward either way as long as you are showing people khair. So this is very important for us. And a heth, a... a, a, a a encouragement to do righteous and good deeds. From the benefits of this hadith is the uh, one of the first benefits al hath ala dilala ala khair imma bi qawl aw imma bi fi'l. So one of the benefits we gain from this hadith is this hadith shows us the importance and encourages us to uh, to show 
others' goodness. You know, the way to goodness. To be a source of guidance for others to goodness. Either through statements, either through statements, or through action. So either through statements or action. Set an example for people. Let them see. Or call them to khayr. So it shows us the importance of what? Of da'wah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of this hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is we also learn uh, or it emphasizes an important principle of the deen uh, in usul al-fiqh which is al-asbab laha ahkam al-maqasid. And in another way of articulating the same qaida, which you'll find often in many of the books, and Ben Uthameen further explains, is al ahkam uh, al hukum al wasail laha ahkam al maqasid. Al wasail laha ahkam al maqasid. Which means that the means to something takes the hukum, the ruling. Of what it, of what of of the the same ruling as what it was intended for. Okay, al wasail laha ahkam al muqasid. So if, for example, we have this pencil, and I am going to use this pencil to write. This pencil aslan, in its origin, it's mubah. It's permissible to use. And there's no reward for using it, and there's no punishment for leaving it. Okay? But now, because this, I'm using it as a wasail, as a means to write a letter to one of the scholars. So that other people can benefit. I'm, I'm, someone else can, can, can benefit from this question. And I'm going to spread it or I'm going to share it with the person. I'm going to write it. So-and-so ask a question and I write the question uh, to the sheikh. And then I write the answer with the same qalam. So then this qalam and the using of this, this pen takes the same reward of, of, of having of, of the intention. The intention was to do this good act of asking the ulama, asking a scholar about the deen. So now, using this pen is now uh, something which is uh, something that is rewarded. It's a good thing, but normally it's something mubah. But now it's went from mubah because the way I'm using it is now it uh, goes to something which is maybe mustahab, which is uh, 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 recommended. You know, it's something beneficial and something good, and there's a reward for using it. However, if I use the same pen to write a letter spreading wickedness about other individuals, and I say so-and-so is doing this, and so-and-so is a da'i, and I want to belittle him in this way, and he looks like this, and his race is like this, and I hate him for this, and you know, whatever the case may be, to spread wickedness, and I want this to go around all the misogyny in the area so we can boycott him or so we can attack his honor. His family's like this, his wife is like this. His mother is like this, speaking ill and evil. So now this wasail, this means, which was normally mubah, normally permissible to use, now I've used it in a wicked way, for a wicked ends. So al wasail laha ahkam al maqasid. This wasail, this means, now was being used for a wicked end, therefore using it was wickedness and sinful because I used it in that wicked way. Okay, so using it in that situation, now I will receive sin for using it because I used it for an evil purpose. So I hope that's clear. And Ben Othamin mentions that here, that this is something which is taken from this hadith and that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that he who guides to something good will have a reward similar to that of the one who acts upon it. 
So by guiding someone to good, which is the wasail, that's the means, the, and the end result was something good. You know, you took a, a lawful means for a lawful end, then you will be rewarded because the lawful end is rewarded and you will be rewarded for taking that means. You showed them khair and they did khair. So you'll both be rewarded with khair. So I think that's that's clear bi idnillah ta'ala. Uh, a last uh, benefit of this hadith is that the reward that a person receives for showing good, it does not decrease anything from them. It doesn't take away any of their uh, reward. In the next hadith, which is the last hadith of this chapter, uh, narrated Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if anyone seeks protection in Allah's name, grant him protection. If anyone asks you for something in Allah's name, give him. And if anyone does a good deed for you, recompense him. But if you do not have the means to do so, supplicate for him. Al-Bayhaqi uh, reported this hadith. This hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, also has uh, immense uh, benefits and from the benefits of this hadith first is it shows us the obligation to uh, exalt Allah the Almighty Azza wa Jal and this is evidence from the statement that the Prophet sallallahu said من استعاذكم بالله فأعيذه فأعيذه that whoever uh, seeks protection in Allah's name, grant him protection. Whoever seeks basically your assistance in the name of Allah, then give him, grant him assistance. So uh, it shows us that it is uh, an obligation to make ta'zim of that, since it was command to give the person that assistance because they invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. So it shows us the greatness of uh, of exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's an obligation to exalt his name subhanahu wa ta'ala and take it seriously. Another benefit of this hadith is the permissibility of to to make isti'adha billahi ta'ala from the evil of uh, one's enemies. So it shows us the permissibility of seeking protection with Allah, seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from one's from the plans of one's evil, uh, of, of the uh, ones uh, of of someone else's evil, or uh, or evil or or the shaitan, as we know, as we always invoke Allah subhanahu wa taala before we're going to read the Quran. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan. Uh, another benefit of this hadith. is the importance of to uh, assist if one is able to uh, when someone comes to you looking uh, for goodness and righteousness that you should assist them in that another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us the uh, excellence and the righteousness which is inherent to the sharia uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with ikhlas with thabat. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.